I was gonna show a game that I just analyzed today for, I just looked at it today for this article. So it has my comments on it. I just did so, but I, I know the game very well because I spent most of this morning working on this and I thought I'd, I'd show, I think it's kind of instructive. This was a game, really old game, from the first, basically the first world championship of chess. It's Wilhelm Steinitz versus uh, Johannes Zukertort. So have you heard of these players? Steinitz. Steinitz. Zukertort was his first uh, official world championship opponent in 1886. They played a match. So this was the first one that was officially for world championship. And Morphy had died in, I think, 1881. So... This was, and back then things moved more slowly, but they, they could have an actual world championship without everyone thinking, okay, this guy the, says there's a world champion, but still there's Morphe, and he may be kind of crazy in something and doesn't play chess anymore, but they didn't want to have a world championship out of respect to him who could just beat everybody, you know? Even maybe, maybe even then while he was, but once he died, then they could have a world championship, right? So this was, uh, uh, this was, I don't know, basically I'm doing column about endgames, and this, this is an interesting endgame. I think it was kind of instructive, maybe not the most exciting game. But. So Steinitz was, e, was white in e4, e5, okay, knight f3, knight c6, and uh, Spanish, which was back then, you know, I think a lot of the games of the match were Spanish, like this. And Zuckertort chose the Berlin defense. So... Um, that's knight f6 right away. Uh, and 114 years later, uh, who, who chose the Berlin defense for a very important world championship? Yeah? Hmm? Okay, Magnus Carlsen also, but that wasn't 114 years later, that was 128 years later. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, Kramnik, I mean, that was how he became world champion. That's how he finally ended Kasparov's reign. Was the, and it's not because he won any games in the Berlin, it was just that he, he held off Kasparov every time at, at the E4. White. Kasparov never got anywhere, and then Kramnik beat him a few times with, with White when he was White, you know? So Berlin, and the idea is that Black is taking the pawn on E4, and then the knight is in, retreating to D6 in most cases. So, okay, castles. Uh, if White takes time out to guard the pawn, then I think, I mean, this is one move you can play, of course, and played about half the time probably here. But it's not as critical as castles because you don't want to spend a time making d3 move. And you can do it, of course, to keep the keep the game from out of the type of stuff that ends up happening. But okay, so castles, and Zukertor took on e4. And basically, I mean, this was a long time ago, and we're going to see that Steinitz's approach to this wasn't even close to to anything that could bother someone. But uh, okay, so knight takes e4. This is the idea. And does anyone know how? White usually the most common way of playing, yeah? D4. D4, yeah. And the idea is if black takes, then you have this, uh, you know, pin here, and that's not good for black. So knight to d6 is the move normally, okay? And then this bishop's under attack. So then it usually goes takes, takes, takes to the pawn, and then we tra and they trade the queens. And this gets to a famous endgame where Kramnik held off Kasparov. And what's going on here is white has this majority of four pawns to three on the king's side. And white has disturbed the black king, which even though there are no queens on the board, can come under trouble, come into trouble. It's happened lots of times that the black king has come under attack. There's still a lot of peace on the board. On the other hand, black has this light squared bishop. So he has two bishops, but it's, it's, it's really particularly important here because white's pawn on e5 has gone a little bit far forward. So this bishop has, you know, can do a lot of stuff, and then white's queenside pawns often end up on the light squares as well. So it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of, lot of battles in this, in this endgame. But this was, uh, you know, a long time ago, and okay, Steinitz played this move, and, um, and so this is also a move, okay, knight to d6, and now he took on e5, okay, black obviously can't take the bishop, because then you know, you lose the queen, right? So, so, um, so he just goes here. And now, here Steinitz played a move which is just really not, bishop takes c6, it's not something anyone would worry about anymore. Because people are not worried about these doubled pawns, basically, here. They say you should take toward the center, right? 
but b takes c6 here would be would be a bad move. Why do you think? What, what's the problem? Why would nobody play this here? Really? Or why shouldn't you play this? Yeah. It makes the queen side structure weaker. Yeah, I mean a pawn is weak first of all, and it blocks this bishop. And the problem is, black may have more pawns in the center, but he can't use those pawns very well. Because let's suppose, okay, in the future, yeah, he's going to move his knight out of the way, maybe to f5. But when he pushes this pawn, the c pawns are going to be backwards. So it's not going to be that easy for him to use those, use his extra pawn in the center that he would have compared to the game. The game, meanwhile, now he has the open d file, and he can put pressure on the open d file. And that's pretty important. And he's freed up his bishop, and his pawns are very solid. There's not really a serious weakness here, but we will see that there is a certain kind of weakness in black's queen side if things happen in a certain way. So okay, took queen e2. So the idea is um, obviously if black castles, if black castles, uh, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to attack this bishop, right? And then takes, queen takes, right? And then you got to watch out. In some positions, there could be this move with this rook hanging, but here, queen takes and this rook is pinned. So there's no, there's no taking on, you know, so there's no tactical boomerang, which you got to watch out for, though. You can't always get away with that because there could be a situation where then it, it rebounds on you and you get checkmated on the back rank or you lose your queen. Okay, so that's that's pretty obvious. Nobody's fallen for that at the world championship level. So bishop e6 uh, is what Zukertort played. And now d3. So Steiner's play is real simple. And actually, this just putting the bishop on f4, which is what he did, it it's, was not really threatening in this game. But it did get me thinking because I saw that there are some real actual, in, certain, in other positions, there are some real threats to c7. Again, if black castles now, what do you think White's doing here? Taking, uh, F7. Yeah, taking F7, right? Because even though that's guarded many, many times, I don't know, I can't even count, about four or five or something, it's still this bishop is under attack on E6, and, and this one here is also, you know, so maybe, maybe black has uh, something after this and then here. I don't know, but probably probably not. Qu oops, sorry. Probably not quite enough play here. I don't know. I mean, maybe he can hold a draw somehow. It's not easy though. So you don't. So black doesn't want that. Um, so knight f5. Okay, it's easy to deal with that threat. Knight f5. Now bishop's guarded on e7, so no problems now. Okay, knight to d2. Steinitz played. Castles c3 guarding d4. And I was thinking, like, first of all, I f when I first saw this game, I saw that black just kind of got outplayed at first. That was my first glance, just flipping through it. And I was wondering, well, I mean, I know this position is totally, uh, totally unthreatening for black. I mean, I don't think that black should be the slightest bit worried here. But I was looking at different things, and c5 was one thing that came to mind, trying to keep this pawn back. But the way he played was fine. But, the, you know, and it's okay, maybe white can build up some play like that, bishop f4, rook d1, I don't know. So it's, black's queen could end up having a little bit of, that's one of black's small problems, is the queen needs to find a good spot. And then we'll eventually try to play d4, if the knight's back on f3 particularly. But okay, he could play that way, but the way he played was fine. He went rook e8, knight e4, so letting the bishop out. And then I was thinking also f6, just to chase the uh, knight back so it has to go to f3 in view of what happened. And then maybe this move. And again, I don't think black has the slightest problem. Queen is going to come up maybe to d5 or d7, rook to d8, bishop f7. And blacks, those bishops just lurk back there, you know. One thing is like, uh, one thing's getting better at chess it involves having a good uh, judgment about minor pieces, like bishops versus knights, that type of thing, and which situations they're good for, how what their value is, and you know, like here, I guess someone just starting off from chess, they're not going to feel the the power of black's bishops lurking on f8 and f7. But trust me, I mean, they're doing something back there. For for instance, keeping the whole queen side under fire. Um, and okay, so 
So okay, so it's so he played this, which is also fine. Bishop f4, rook a to d8. Again, he could play f6 and chase the knight back. Okay, d4, and black black has this one weakness on c7 that he has to be a little bit careful about. So he went here, and now knight c5, and then the bishop went back. So really, black is fine here. I think totally fine because. He's got his rooks coordinated in the center on their ideal files. The queen has come out. It's, it's, uh, it's not in any real danger. The queen is, you know, not because generally that was one of the problems black had to deal with. The bishop is safe, and the other bishop can come to f8 if it needs to. c7 is not reachable. So let's, so let's see what's, you know, what's happened now. Bishop c8, knight, white went knight to d3, f6. Knight here, okay, attacking the queen. Black went here, so the queens are traded. The knight took back, and then white went here. And now this is an important moment. So what do you think black should do? Because this was the most instructive moment, I think, in the game. Because first, I would say here, well, I mean, in my opinion, black should be better, especially after he plays the right couple of moves, which he didn't do. And then it ended up that Steinitz got the advantage. Maybe a small advantage, but some advantage, so. Yeah? Bishop d6. Uh, bishop d6, okay. I um, think I uh, play this. That's why it's the same. The reason I was thinking that is because that move was coming. <laughs> huh? But uh, for one thing, I can do this. This is now hanging, and I'm going to take this pawn, and also a7 is hanging. So tactically, it doesn't. But even, even um, like in principle, you don't really want to exchange your bishops when you're. I mean, I'm probably black's fine here, but okay. I mean, in principle, you don't want to exchange one of your bishops when you have two bishops, because now you don't have two bishops anymore, right? You know, the thing is, bishops compared to knights, they, they move to more squares. They have a longer reach. So they're stronger pieces in one regard, but in the other regard, they can only see half the board. They can only see 32 squares. So that's why if you have two bishops, well, now you've got the advantages of the bishops without the disadvantage. But uh, if you only have one, okay, it's, it's equal to a knight, basically. Here, maybe it's a little bit better than a knight, but on the other hand, Black's position's a little constricted. I don't know, maybe some moves like this. But, but okay, in any case, it fails tactically, I guess, to A takes B5, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it looks, I don't know, maybe there's some chance, but I don't see, it's, it doesn't look right to me. So what else? So, I mean, the reason I was also thinking that move as well is because as soon as he kicks your knight off of uh, B, uh, B5, that, that pawn becomes a weakness. So uh, maybe, like, rook to, rook to D7. Okay. Yeah, and then also there's this issue of this pin here, so there's moves like knight c5. Yeah. You just ignore the, the attack on, on c7? Well, I mean, a4, the knight's going to be able to go to d6. So it's not like white has a winning threat. This is more of a question about positional stuff. How about a5? a5, so a5, okay. White has to go knight to c2, right? Yeah, and now bishop, yeah. bishop f5. Yeah, okay, I mean it looks great for black. I don't see any. I don't see the slightest hint of a problem in his position. I see that only black has the initiative here. Okay, white maybe doesn't stand too much worse, but black has two bishops, no real weakness. And now we could do, put some cramp on like this, maybe a little bit, or do some other stuff. I don't know. Can advance pawns on a king, king f7. Looks like a useful move. A lot of a lot of different stuff, and we're not worried about losing that pawn because the knight, if white tries to chase the knight, it can come here, and then maybe to c4. This bishop is a strong piece, you know. So but the main thing is he he did not he played bishop f5 right away, which it looks like not much of a difference right now. He even threatens a5, threatens to win a piece, right? I mean, a5 will just knock the knight away from b4 and then take the. But he un totally underestimated a real thematic idea is that white is pushing this a pawn up to a5. And this gaining the space here this is real important. And we're going to see that, well, I would say black stands considerably, I mean, not, maybe not totally, not considerably better, but 
you know, comfortably a little bit better here versus what ended up happening in the game where white is totally out of any danger, the only person playing for a win, and maybe not a huge amount better, but he's, you know, he's a little better and caused black to make a mistake. We'll see. So he, what, he didn't, what he underestimated was the value of white pushing the pawn up to a5, which is creating a permanent threat to black's queen side, weakening b7, fixing b7 as a weakness, the possibility of a6, creating the c5 square for the knight as a base by s making b6 difficult to, you know. So what he did was he went bishop f5. And now a4, okay. So Steinitz understood. And another thing is rook pawns are the best way in a lot of cases to gain space. Have you ever seen position, it's not clear what to do next, so you go h5, h4, and you gain some space and cramp your opponent's position. Or you weaken their king side a little bit. They're great pawns to advance for gaining space because they only, most pawns you advance a pawn, it weakens two squares. It leaves behind two squares at least on either side of the pawn, right? If I push f4, I've weakened e4 and g4. But, you know, but if I push this pawn, I've only weakened b4. I am not weakening this pawn over this square over here because it doesn't exist. So that's rook pawns are advancing. Rook pawns are a good way to gain space. I mean, every position is different. But so here, where there's not a whole lot of immediate plans, just this little gain of space becomes real relevant. So a4. Now what should black do? This is a little bit more. Mm, Actually, there's a couple possibilities, and even what he did wasn't too bad. But he could have guaranteed a draw, first of all, which he probably should have considered doing. It's a tactical idea here this time. A couple tactical ideas, I don't know. I mean, white's pieces look very shaky, right? So you don't want to let the pawn just get to a5. Knight moves to d6, pawn to a5. That's what happened, and black was a little worse then. We'll see. So what could black do instead? I mean, there's not too many other candidates, right? Play a5 first? Yeah, he could play a5 here. I mean, probably this is not the type of move they would consider in the 19th century, but, uh, you know, I mean, this looks like it leads to a draw. Because if white knight moves, this hangs on d3. So you've got to take the knight, right? Black takes here. Now this is under attack, so you have to take here. Black takes. And now white can throw in the taking on e8 so the d4 won't be hanging, but it's, it's going to be a draw regardless. And then black will take here, and then, you know, I mean, this is just... White's up a pawn, but this pawn on b2 is going to fall. This is not going anywhere, so it should be a draw. I mean, this, I mean it, can, it can advance to d6, but black is easily holding that off, and, you know, realistically, white's chances of winning are not, not very high. So that's, that's one thing black could do. Another thing is, another tactical idea is that all these pieces, bishop here, guarded by the knight, but the knight is under attack, and this knight is guarding that knight, this knight is under attack. So, so then, I mean, this move becomes pretty, pretty obvious, right? I don't know if Zukotor was a great tactician. He might have seen it, but he just decided not to do it because takes, rook takes. Yeah, I mean, this is under attack, right? Kind of, not really, but it's pinned. Yeah, I mean, but this knight is under attack. It's overworked. Um, but white has this move. I guess this was only move. Hmm? Yeah, then black can do this, and he's down the exchange, but he has two pawns for it, and two bishops are strong, and black's not in real danger of losing here. This is also, this rook's under attack, so there's no time to take this. You know, you're going to move the rook somewhere, and then black will play a5, and, or c5, and maybe even, maybe even black's better, I don't know. He's got those strong pawns supported by bishops, I would rather take black, right? I mean, that's... Probably it's more or less equal, but you know, I mean, actually, I would rather have the black pieces if you think about it. Like it's not easy to d use the rooks at all because the bishops cover all the entry points, and 
meanwhile, they support the potential slow advance of the past pawns. I mean, the main thing is I don't see a plan for white, but for black, there's lots of things he can do. Bring the king to the center, solidify the queen side, start pushing the c pawn, c4, bishop d3, you know, start slowly advancing those pawns. It's, it's tough for white a little bit. So that was something really worth considering. I mean, that's totally forcing, right? Knight takes d4. Have to take it. Maybe white has some other move, but I don't know what, though. Here, using the pin, but I guess black can just do something like guard the bishop and prepare to take this nevertheless, and still white the same problem. Because right? if that knight moves, the one on d3 hangs. So, I don't know, something like that probably looks like. But okay, so that's, this is a little bit irrelevant to our thing. He, he just played a normal move, knight d6, okay? And now, what should white do? A5, yeah, I mean, white, so, so this is, the thing is, like, in this position, I don't know, you may, you may be looking at this position at first, just white here, and you're thinking, you know, it's vague, what, what you should do, rook to d1, okay, black threatens a5, you see the tactics, but understanding that this, this, just pushing the a pawn and the huge value of getting this up here, now if black stops the pawn and suddenly knight c5, and the situation has changed a lot, because this pawn is now really fixed. This pawn on a5 is holding back these two here, you know, I mean, this pawn is fixed, this pawn is stuck, the knight on c5 is now almost can't be chased away hardly, you know, I mean, black knight moves and this pawn on b7 falls, and this pawn by moving up there is, be, has become quite threatening for black, you know, as the game goes on. That's what happened, but black didn't play a6, and I think he made the right choice. I mean, because this, this position, looks seriously difficult for black, I mean, and there, he's very passive, so I don't know, it looks, looks tough, I mean, if he, if he gives up the pawn on b7 somehow, he'll probably take here, but I mean, then everything else is weak over there, I and mean, he gets this pawn, but I mean, all these are weak, and then when this falls, this a5 pawn, that's no good, you can't do that. So he, he went knight here, oops, he went knight here. So he allowed Steinitz to push a6. And I don't know, maybe even, should, maybe even Steinitz shouldn't have even taken the opportunity. There's possible moves like, I don't know, this to bring the king up to f2, but I'm not sure, you know, black might. One thing he can do is sometimes trade these, get opposite colored bishops and hold a draw somehow that way, but okay, so, so Stein has decided to play a6, and really black has only one answer to this. I mean, his queen side is being destroyed. If he pushes here, knight takes, right? And then if black takes here, what do you think white does here? Ideas? I mean, this is a tactical situation. Black's up a piece, so we got to decide. We could take the bishop with check, but okay. I mean, king comes here and knight's under attack. Black's down a pawn, but maybe the pawn on a6 will fall somehow. But there's better. Anyway, what? Yeah. What do you think? Take the rook. Yeah, because even though it's attacked twice, both of those captures. You know, this loses the rook and this loses the bishop. So white wins a whole rook that way and is up a, up the exchange. That's, so that's best. So this, he can't play b6, and of course if he allows white to take on b7, his whole queen side is destroyed. So his only move is to take on d3, to deflect white's knight. So, and then b6. I mean, he can't allow his queen side to be broken up by taking on a6, for instance. That's just too awful. All those pawns will be weak. So here, now, um, basically, we've seen the situation has changed enormously. Before, you agree that black was probably better if he played a5 and bishop f5. I mean, he had the pressure, white had nothing at all. White had no real pressure on black. Black had those two bishops, he had no weaknesses, he had lots of ways to improve. Now, first of all, black had to give up his main advantage, the two bishops. And second of all, this pawn on a6 is a standing threat for the rest of the game. And you can't really, uh, you can't, you can't really, um, 
overestimate the danger by this pawn on the sixth ring. Because for the rest of this game, until you start a new game of chess, this pawn is sitting there two squares away from queening. And it may have this pawn in front of it, but as the game goes on, all kinds of things can happen and that they can cause this pawn to be under attack or can be removed or that type of thing. You know, so this, that's just, in a practical terms, that positionally, this is a, a huge achievement for white. But if black, I think, plays well here, he, can, he has reasonable chances to hold. So Steinitz went rook e3, wants to double the rooks in the e-file. And it was natural, but I don't know if that was really the best way to try to press this position. I don't know. I can ask Carlson how to play here best, because he's really good at those type of things. Maybe rook e6, a better way to threaten c6. I don't know. Black still does this, I suppose. Maybe you can trade things, and then knight b4 will happen. That's, you know, Black's, you know... Okay, that's, he guards it passively, I suppose, because if this comes here, then we're, then, I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe black can do that too. So, well, I don't know, um, or, or instead of doubling the rooks, because it could have just led to the trade of all the rooks, he could play some move like, I'm always wanting to play this, and then king f2, to get the king into the game, but. Okay, white doesn't have a whole lot, and there is such moves like c5 and that type of thing, with counterplay. But, okay, rook e3. So black played a normal move, king f7, rook e1. And here, black just played total, just the worst move you can see practically. I mean, that's the funny thing, you know. I mean, these were pretty good players. You've seen that they've, they've played reasonably well. I mean, this was a long time ago, and you tend to think that they're just terrible players nowadays compared to now. but. You know, they, they, there wasn't a huge, uh, you know, it's not a terrible, it wasn't a terrible play, but now suddenly Zuckertor just played an awful move. And I don't know, I think it's because, first of all, his health wasn't that great and he got tired. It was everyone said this, and also maybe he got bored in some cases. And um, and also back then, if you look at the games, it's like there's, there's big groups of people standing around the board smoking cigars and stuff, you know, that... So it's a little bit different situation. It was less of a sport and more people, f you know, they've spent a lot of time playing these moves and they are just discovering all this stuff back then. The opening, from the very opening, they're thinking. And there's a lot of more philosophy than nowadays, you know, the, the players are playing 10, 15 moves automatically and they, they kind of know all the patterns much better. And then there's a lot more time to spend on, on small details. But here, okay, Zuckertort played this totally ridiculous move. I mean, who would put this bishop into a pin? So he's guarding c7, but I mean, this bishop is never going to be on move. I mean, he just lo he'll lose the game. Um, okay, so what should white do now? I mean, this stupid thing over here says the, the right move. <laughs> I mean, it says training, that the whole idea is to hide whatever is written there. I don't know. Okay, knight to b4, I mean... This this bishop is the bishop is uh, pinned. So he, that's the worst thing Black could do. Not only did he pin his own bishop, but he allowed White's knight to get active, real active. So um, can't take the knight because White will just take on e8. So Black's only move is is well okay. If he plays c5, White's taking, and the bishop can't take because rook takes e8. If pawn takes knight c6 and this is awful for black because all of his pieces have to guard this, so he can't even get out of the pin. His king has to guard it. He can't move his can't move his rook away because it's required to guard it. And the knight also has to guard a7. If white, if white takes that pawn, this guy's going to queen. And that's the that's the like white queening that pawn is about the best result black could have here. And anyway, that's not playable. So he Zukertor was very clever though, and he came up with a way to play on. Uh, he went g5. Okay, bishop's under attack, retreats, okay, whatever. Now he went f5. Again, c5 is... So the idea is, okay, he threatens f4. With easy defense, f4. And black's weakened his position, but now he can go c5. Because if white takes, obviously, what does black do? Yeah? Yeah, he takes with the bishop, and here, f4... Uh, exposed the diagonal. So, okay, I mean, he's definitely clever, Zuka's word, but I mean, rook d7, I don't know. 
Okay, so, so, but still, so white can't take on c5 and make black take back with the pawn like before, but he still goes into c6. Black takes on d4, take back. Okay, that's not what white wanted, but it's still good enough, right? Now black is just completely uh, tied up. Knight e5 is threatened, so he doesn't have time to take here because then this fork is coming, right? So he has to play king f8, and now here, Steinitz played a move which was good enough to win. In principle, I, I, I wouldn't even consider taking there because he's, this is not going anywhere, right? Yeah. You know, so. Your piece are moving, yeah. So what, what else could White do here? Rook to e5 is what he played. So that's a good move. That was good enough to win, but you have to see a fair fair amount here. Okay. Um, there's an even better move though, because we don't I mean that move was enough to win, okay. There was it was it was good and white should win after that. Maybe it was a little bit harder too if black had defended better, maybe white would have ended up having to play longer, but it should be a, it should be a win after rook e5. But there is a, okay, let's look at this from the p point of view of black. He desperately wants to liberate this bishop, but neither rook can move. The king can't really move at all, basically because of this, and it has to guard that. In any case, king f7 doesn't do anything. So only one idea is to take here, is to try to take this pawn and get rid of white's knight that way. So can white stop him from doing that? Yeah? Well, what would happen if you push the pawn? That creates a little problem here, right? So now, yeah, bishop c5. So no, you can't push the pawn. It's a hard move to find. Basic, basically, I mean, bishop f2. This it looks strange. I mean, but bishop f2, black can't take on d4 now. Because now the bishop's aimed at the rook, so you have, what do you play here? Take on e7, right? Yeah. And then, you know, take here, check rook e1. So, okay, so that's, so he can't take the pawn. This kills the only plan black has, the only idea that he can even possibly do. And if he takes this here, then um, maybe rook e6, but basically now, or rook e5, I don't know. But anyway, now bishop h4 becomes an idea. And plus, black simply has no moves. I mean, he can he can be in Zugzwang in a moment. The knight can't move because it's going to hang a7, which is already going to, then this pawn will promote soon. I mean, it's basically, so it's terrible. And if he doesn't take on f4, his plan has been stopped, and white can, he could go here, trying to come into e4, but, um, yeah, now I suppose you can take the a-pawn, right? Well, I don't want the knight coming into e4. Maybe it's not right. No, no, you just play rook e5. Can't, just preventing any counterplay. That's the idea, I mean, here in this position. Keeping him tied up. Knight e4, okay, now we take. That's the point. So now there's no knight e4, and again, black can't move his pieces. He can go knight c8, but, I mean, this is getting pretty ugly, right? He still can't move any pieces, plus this is also... I mean, can, his rook can't even, you know, even if he gets the knight to c8, he still can't unpin because that's covered by the knight. So it's kind of sad position. So I feel like what Steinitz did didn't quite justify the position, but it was still enough to win. So he went rook e5. Okay, black takes d4. It's the only chance. Obviously, knight d6, so I just takes on g5. It's ugly, you know, same as before, even worse. So now white takes, right, because black's, threatening the knight, and now it takes here, takes there, and still black's in this ugly pin. He's got a little bit of activity compared to before, and he's got rid of that terrible knight on c6, but this pin is still his problem. So really, Steinitz had to have seen, though, if he, if he was, he had to have seen the next move, Zuckertor played, which could have turned the, turned the table somewhat, bishop here. 
I mean, because what you don't take on e8, right? You see what happens after rook takes e8? What happens now? Checkmate, checkmate right? Rook to d1, double checkmate. So, so he, I mean, black doesn't have to play bishop c5. He could play something like rook to d2. But really, I mean, white can't win the bishop yet, but it's, it's ultimately black's, two, black's pinned, and it's just, you know, maybe take here. I don't know, you have to watch out for this check, right? So white has to be a little careful, but okay, move the, maybe move the king here or something. I don't know. But, but uh, yeah, but I can't take b2 because um, bishop e5, king g6, and then back to f6 after after all is said and done, right? I mean, takes, check, takes, takes, and then this. Should be enough to win. Just the a7 pawn will fall at the end of everything. Take, 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 take rook a8, rook a7. See how this is important now? Even we don't know what adventures are going to happen in the next 20, 30 moves. We know that a6 pawn is there. So I don't know. There's probably other ways to win. I'm just looking at that off the top of my head. But anyway, okay. So he played bishop c5. Well, so what does white do now? Here he does. He goes. He's still. I mean, if he, he needed to probably. Well, he needed to see this from the beginning. If he did, I don't know, but whatever. And then the following, what happens? Any ideas? I mean, what's the move you want to make? There's a piece that's really... Yeah, I was thinking bishop to e5, though. That was black uh, to take the bishop and then make a discovered uh, discovered check. Okay, bishop e5. Yeah, yeah, I think you can just go king g6. Yeah, I don't see any way to use the discover attack, but king g6, now what does white do? Too many things hanging, right? Rook f6 check, I guess you can do this. It's looking scary. Maybe white's going to lose. So, you know, what else could white? I mean, what's the move you want to make, yeah? Yeah, rook takes c5. you got to make that, w try to make it work. And this is a forcing move. And you want to play this move. I mean, maybe there's king f1, but then black's piece are real active. Maybe you can even go and take the a6 pawn. Uh, who knows? I mean, it's anyone's guess what's going on there. Maybe white's better still, but you want to try to make this work because this removes black's whole basis of his position. Now the rook is hanging on e8, so black has to insert this check. If he takes back, of course, white just takes on e8. So he has to uh, he has to insert this check. Okay, white takes back, and now. Hmm. Yeah, pin the rook, right? Bishop c3. So now the question is the king and pawn ending. He has to also evaluate this from this position at least. I mean, when he play rook takes c5, probably you know he should have. When he play rook e5, I kind of doubt it. I don't know. Who knows? Probably he, maybe he did, but uh, you don't need to. Calculate everything when the king and pawn, and okay, goes here. You trade. You just have to see that you play h4, and he can't do anything to the kingside pawns because you're going to have g3. If he brings the king to g4, you have g3, and he won't be able to take on g3 because h5. That's the main thing. And then, meanwhile, black has this pass pawn. It can be a connected pass pawn, but the crucial thing is white can undermine it by b4. So white's plan is okay. Black can't leave the kingside. You can't stray too far because white will queen then. White will bring the king to d3, and then undermine the pawn with b4. Get rid of the defender, take d4, then take b4, and then come up and take a7. And we know that these pawns are tying black up on the king's side, and they can't be attacked because g3 will keep them completely. So really, a little bit of logical thinking. You don't have to calculate the variations, but some logical thinking, you can say, OK, this winning. You know, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, you need to be absolutely sure with before you go into king and pawn endings, because at this point, you know, the die is cast. You can't go back, and they're going to find the right moves, generally. But, uh, 
you know, because they're so, it's so concrete. But here you don't, you don't have to look at every single move, you just have to realize, okay, he can't do anything, you know, and then you know that. So black, uh, black played king f5, okay. Um, king f2. He went king e4. If he goes king g4, we're not worried, we go g3. And now we're going to bring the king to d3 next. Okay. Um, so he went king e4, okay, he tries to keep the white goes there. He tries to keep the white king over there. Now he went c5. If he went d3, okay, whatever. White can always divert, you know, with h, h5. And then white's going to divert black. And there's a still a pawn on g2. So even black takes the pawn on g6. You know, white will divert. This is one way to win. Whoops. Uh, and then, you know, Black's going to do this, and okay, but there's still this pawn there, so then white goes, and then suddenly, oh yeah, a6 pawn. <laughs> so even in the king and pawn ending, okay, probably it's winning even if the pawn's in a2, but still, it could even in king and pawn endings, that could have been re relevant, depending on how the game went. So okay, so black went c5. Now what should white do here? This is a very important move. I think without this move, white's not going to win then. Or, yeah, probably. Huh? Yeah, b3. You got to play b3 because if you allow c4, it's suddenly not so, not so. Well, probably white wins anyway because even if you allow, even if let's say the pawn was on c4, put the king on d2. You would play h5. You uh, no, never mind. You can't play b3 because c3 and blacks. You know, so yeah. I mean, you have to play b3. So, um, so black plays king e5 again. D3. It's the same. Diverts the king, and then king comes up, takes c5, and pushes the pawn to b6, and queen the a pawn. So king e5, king d3, king f4, I guess he played that. I mean, what else is there? King d5, trying to keep the, the two pawns, you know, that, but then h5. Eventually, black's going to have to go back. OK, he can go here, and then g4 even, so we can we can be more tricky. I mean, probably g6 wins too, but I mean, we can keep the king from there. And then if, if he goes here, we got our, what, what should we do here? Yeah? Yeah, we got our undermining move. We break up the pawn chain. So attack the base of the pawn chain. It's even relevant in this position. Of course, if he goes this way, so b4 we don't want to do because c4. But here we go g6. King is too far away now. What do we do here? Yeah, just queen the pawn, right? We don't need to take on g6, although that's winning too. So he played king, uh, the game wound up with, uh, he played king f4, and now, what do we play? Hmm? What does white play now? Yeah? Um, g3 check is fine, of course. Yeah, you just play b4 and black resign. g3 is fine, of course, too. I mean, Either one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, b4 and black resigned because, you know, obviously has to take, if you go c4, which one do we take? d4. d4, yeah, we don't take here because then suddenly, now I guess you lose, right? No, it's probably still a draw, but okay, they're both queen. Anyway, but uh, we take d4, obviously. So if black takes here, then just take here, go and take b4, and then take a7 while black's busy. Well, he can't even take any of White's kingside pawns, so obviously it's well-timed to resign. Mm -hmm.